happen, you'd have a parallel path, and the ground would carry half an amp, and the neutral would carry half an amp. And it doesn't even take a whole amp to kill you. So you'd wind up with current on your ground wire. Integrity. How would you define it? The way I define it would be doing the right thing even when you know nobody's watching or nobody will find out. The problem with electricians and electricity is that everyone will eventually find out that you don't have integrity because it's either going to fail or someone's coming back behind you. So that's why I always keep these close by. So with that, let's get into the video. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how to use these. I'm going to show you why they're great. Let's get into it. Really useful for electricians. Let me show you why these are awesome. One set will last you a long time if you take care of them. That's, that's the key. You have to take care of these. They are tapped for different size machine screws. So this part drills and then this part taps and then you can take a bolt and thread it in. And that's essential for electrical installs. I'm going to show you why. All right. So 250.8 A permitted methods. Now I'm not going to read all of this, but number five here says machine screw type fasteners that engage not less than two threads or are secure with a nut. And down below here, you got uses not permitted. So non-conductive coatings such as paint, lacquer, enamel, there's five right there, machine screw type fasteners that engage not less than two threads. And then you got clean surfaces there, non-conductive coatings such as. First things first, you buy a kit like this, you need to have somewhere to put these. If you don't buy these with an actual bit holder, you really wanna have a good space to put these. And I already know where you're gonna have these so you don't break them, protect your investment. This kit comes with the most common electrical sizes. Those are common sizes and panels for holes like this, or even behind these white stickers. You'll see if I push my finger here. Those holes come pre-tapped, ready for machine screws so you can attach more ground bars. See down there, they got a machine threaded screw for this grounding strap there. This bonds the case back to this ground bar. So these are really useful. You never know when you're gonna to need to add a ground, especially to a disconnect or something like that. Let's see how it does. See how it's making the threads there. And those are quarter 20 threads. Now, something you want to do here, you want to scratch this paint because paint is not conductive. You mark out where we're going to be scratching the paint at. You want to get a wire brush or something and knock all that out. Now we're ready for a solid connection. And what you're going to see is that this thing's just going to screw right in there. Look at that threading in there. And you'll see that we can actually put quite a bit of torque on this because it's properly threaded. See that? putting a lot of torque on that. Show you my hand here, how much torque we're putting. Mm. All right, so if you've noticed by now, um, no self tappers allowed, yeah. It's gotta be a machine threaded screw. So the code does say that you can have uh, thread forming machine rated screws. That's where you get the self tapper but then on the back side of that, it has machine rated screws because that tap is actually making the proper thread. That's different. I'm talking about just a regular self-tapping screw out of the box with the aggressive thread. 
Those things aren't doing anything. In the event of a fall, you want at least two, that's what the code book says, two threads engaging on your machine threaded screw. And self tappers don't do that. And if you're using self tappers still, you're just flat out not a very good electrician or you don't care about your job or you didn't know. But now you know and you got no excuse. You need to have these tools on you. They make a number of them. Klein has some. They even make the taps for $4. They got a number, I think, 7 bit. Um, an Irwin tap. You can just put in a drill and zip it on through. Wh whatever you're doing, make sure you're doing it per code and doing it reliably because it's essential for these screws to be able to carry the current that you need to trip breakers and do normal functions of what an electrical system needs to do in the event of a fault. So uh, I'll say it again, you're just a bad electrician if you're not doing this and uh, that's all I can say. There we go. So that's a good connection there. You can see on the bottom side there, there it is there. And that's a properly threaded hole that's rated for bonding. And this drill is older than dirt. So this is a tool for the job and it doesn't take very much torque as you can see. And this is a real panel can. All right, I'm gonna to try to break this down really simple. Let's see if we can do it. Pretty much anything that can become energized, anything that electricity can consume or just make energized in general, like metal, it's conductive. The whole thing is now energized, okay? Anything like that needs to be bonded to ground because what you're gonna see is that the ground is connected back to the neutral at the source. So that ground is relevant to that neutral and the neutral is the source of all the power. So if we can get current back onto the neutral, it'll go back through the transformer and trip the breaker. That's that's the most simple way that I can explain that. So, the term bonding would be if you take something that is of a different value and you have something else, you want to make them the same value. So you bond them together. Now they're the same potential or the same value. So a panel can, a disconnect, things like that. These tools are required because they make machine style threads where you have a solid, reliable connection that's able to carry current. And anything that become energized must be bonded. So in this case, if we had a wire that touched the can and it's bonded, the breaker should trip. Because remember, you're relevant back to that neutral. Now, if we just have a panel can and there is no ground attached to the metal can, it's almost like a bird on a high wire where the bird's not getting shocked because he's not touching ground. He's not touching another wire. He's just, he's just up there. Technically, the bird has electricity flowing through it just, just as a piece of metal would. But... The bird is not getting shocked because he's not touching something else. So we got this horrible diagram here. See this guy right here, zero V, zero volts, okay? If he was to touch either those 120s, he would have 120 volts from his hand to his feet because the ground is zero. So you'd have 120 volts across your heart. Kind of, kind of in this path here different than hand to hand, but still, you would feel the shock. If the ground was also 120 volts, and you were to touch 120 volt wire, you would actually have zero volts because there's no difference, just like a bird on a high wire. 
So, unfortunately, we are always grounded. When we're not wearing shoes, we don't have rubber. We're always grounded. And the earth would be, we'll just call it zero. And anything metal has a chance to become energized. So what we want to do is we want to bond anything metal that can become energized back to the source, which would be the neutral. But we don't bond directly to the neutral because we don't want current on our ground. And I'm going to show you how you can get current on your ground if you bond in the wrong places. So follow along with the video and hopefully this will make more sense. All right, so this is my main panel. I do have solar. And I'm gonna show you some fundamentals of electricity. Even off of our solar, we have 20 amps coming there. We have 21 amps there, so this is probably carrying about one amp. Exactly. If these were bonded here, we already saw earlier that we were pulling one amp on our neutral wire, which is good because neutrals are allowed to carry current. They carry the imbalance. But what would happen is if we bonded our grounds and neutrals together here, instead of just a neutral carrying one amp, what would happen, you'd have a parallel path and the ground would carry half an amp and the neutral would carry half an amp. And it doesn't even take a whole amp to kill you. So you wind up with current on your ground wire. All right, now you know what bonding is and you know how to do it reliably to get a good solid connection back to ground. You know what tools to use and you know why we do it, so. All right, so here's the fix. The grounds and neutrals are bonded right there with that screw, but also right here with this wire. So the fix would be leave this bonded that way this ground stays bonded to the case by using this screw here. We're gonna take our neutrals off and wire nut them together. Cause essentially this connection point is just like one giant wire nut. So we're just gonna wire these whites together, leave this ground bonded. Easy fix. There you go, neutrals isolated and we're still bonded. Hey, let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you found this interesting or informative, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching.